everybody, Kayla in the garden. It is a hot muggy day today. Oh my goodness. Um, I'm out in the garden today. I am cleaning up my collars because they have a little bit of a problem. <laughs> it is the, uh, well, it's time for every gardener's nemesis, the um, cabbage moth and the uh, cabbage looper caterpillar or looper caterpillar or several other unflattering names that you might want to call it when you come out and see something like this. Does this look familiar? Every gardener hates, hates seeing this sort of thing. Our poor kale is absolutely decimated. Um, it, it's, it's definitely time for another uh, pest video on how to deal with these guys. So let's give you a little bit of background about your um, enemy here in the garden. It actually starts as a white moth. It's a cabbage moth and um, pretty small. You know, he, he's, he's not very big. He goes flitting around and he looks so cute and adorable. But keep an eye on him because you'll notice that he only lands, or rather she, she only lands on certain um, plants like kale or collards or cauliflower or broccoli or cabbage. Do you see the um, correlation between those plants? They are all in the brassica family. Um, and uh, yeah, the cabbage moth, aptly named, loves to go land on those plants, lay some eggs, and then, oh, a few days later, you wake up and you start seeing little small holes. And then next thing you know, they look like this because you've got a massive infestation. So. Number one, it's the cabbage moth's fault, okay? You gotta catch those guys if you're able to. That will stop the infestation of them. The cabbage moth lays the caterpillars. The caterpillar loopers um, will then do this. Okay, so what can you do about these annoying pests before they completely decimate your garden? Um, what we do, we like to keep an organic garden. The only product that we use in the garden um, is called BT. It is not a broad spectrum insecticide. It's not insecticidal soap. Those things are, in our opinion, terrible. They, um, they will kill more good bugs than bad bugs. BT is one of the few things that is actually good about targeting the thing that you actually want to take out. It is something that um, is in the soil um, and it is a protein um, that then the caterpillars ingest. It messes with their digestive system. It paralyzes them. And effectively right after that they die but the problem is is that they actually have to eat the leaf that they're on in order to ingest it so what we get um, is BT it just says caterpillar at the top you can get any brand that says BT in it and it is Bacillus thuringiensis it's a really tough one to pronounce that's why we almost always just call it BT um, if you're concerned about being organic make sure it's got this arm ring okay this is um, organic gardening it is a good uh, brand logo to look for okay when you're looking around for this this will kill the um, tomato hornworms it will definitely take out the uh, caterpillar loopers but big but it will also take out caterpillars that you want like monarchs okay um, or the I love seeing the swallowtail caterpillar. So you've got to be real careful about where you spray this stuff. Okay, we, we don't want to take out those caterpillars. They're the good guys. Okay, but so if you plant dill or fennel or carrots, uh, parsley, those are all things that the, um, especially the swallowtail butterfly or the swallowtail caterpillar loves to eat. So you've got to be real careful about not spraying around that. Milkweed, if you've got that in your yard, don't spray that. The monarchs love that. So be careful where you spray this stuff. Only hit the plants that you're seeing affected. Now, when you're spraying your plants, most brassicas have this problem, okay? The water just falls right off. It doesn't stick and uh, your, uh, your stuff is just gonna come right off, okay? What we've started using, where'd I put it? I've got all these ledges everywhere, is this spreader sticker. And it kind of pops the surface and makes it so that the water will stick to the leaf. And then the caterpillar will definitely eat it. And then, hey, no more caterpillars in your garden until you find the yeah, cabbage moth that you missed, okay? So we get this. This is actually locally done here in Kansas City. Uh, Gordon's spreader sticker. And it will help, um, kind of pop that coating on your leaf so that the water will actually stick and that uh, BT will actually do some good. It won't just 
cascade right off of your leaf. <laughs> I've got my handy dandy <laughs> spreading BT man here. And what do we use? Just a one, this is just a one gallon pump sprayer, Home Depot. Yep, and you, so it's one gallon. Yeah, I, I do one gallon just because I don't want to have more than I need mixed oh, up at yeah, a time. Yeah, of course, because it degrades. Yeah. Um, and we put in, so we're actually going to do a little test so you can see how wonderful the spreader sticker works. So let's show you real fast. the When you spray the leaves with just water, um, the water beads up, rolls right off, and the leaf is instantly dry, it seems like, or at least it's going to dry within, you know, 30 seconds. And it won't dry with the BT on it. Right, it, is, and the BT will roll right off. But when you put the the spreader sticker in and then spray the leaf, it, it clings to the leaf. And so the leaf will actually stay wet and will dry on the leaf. And you want to be able to make sure that you spray the top side of the leaf and the bottom side. The bottom side is probably more important because that's where the caterpillars hide out all the time. That's where they eat from. That is where they eat from because they're protected. They don't they're have to worry in the about, shade. Yeah, they don't have to worry about other bugs. They don't have to worry about um, birds getting them. Yeah, and it's in the shade. Mm -hmm. So flip those leaves, get the spreader sticker, and then also get that BT in there at the same time when you are spraying, right? Yes. Okay. Do you have like amounts that you put in the gallon I sprayer? I just follow the instructions on the label. Every follow one's maybe a little bit different. All right. Awesome. You know, on ours, it's like a, a teaspoon or two teaspoons or per uh, no, tablespoon. There he is. <laughs> Thank you for taking care of our produce. Because yeah. I don't like doing it. <laughs> Sorry, but yeah. You're going to edit that part out for me to tumble to this. Which part? Just before when I was tape tape to do the. Oh no, trust me, I stumble all the time. Yeah, yeah but I mean, <laughs> just follow the instructions on the label. Yeah, just follow the instructions. That's what yeah. they were. And, and, and like See, this, I stumble. That's what they're there for. <laughs> like this, it says, you know, half a teaspoon to a teaspoon for five gallons. Oh. So I'm using a, a gallon. I just do Tiny a couple of drops. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's where this bottle lasts you years. Yes, it will. Eight ounces. Yep. So now you're set. So once you've sprayed your plants, uh, it will take a few days. Just, you know, kick back, relax. Don't fret about it too much. Um, you can help things along by picking off what caterpillars you do find. They are almost always underneath the leaf is where you will find them. They can be really, really tiny or big and fat. You know, it's kind of like gross in my opinion. Um, the, uh, the other thing you will also find are cocoons, okay, for more cabbage moss in your future. So make sure you get those tiny little um, spun up cocoons and get rid of them. Otherwise, you're gonna have just another cycle of this infestation. BT only lasts on your plants for just a few days, no more than a week max. Um, if it rains, it's gonna wash right off. You're gonna have to reapply. So keep that part in mind. Don't rain like right at, or don't spray right after a rainstorm or if you've got rain in the forecast. You're just gonna have to do this all over again. <laughs> okay, so will your plant survive? Almost certainly yes, okay? Even those um, skeletonized kale leaves that I just showed you, I'm gonna cut them all off. I've already got a cluster of like four or five new baby leaves coming. Kale is actually very difficult to kill off. Um, it'll be fine. Um, you know, I won't be eating from it for probably two or three weeks, but that's okay. Uh, I've got others. I, and that's another reason why I spread uh, my plantings all throughout my garden because of the cabbage moth found that. But you know what? I've got another stash. I'm not concerned. So same with my collards. Collards in one area got hit bad. The other area, nothing. So we're still eating off the collards really, really well. Okay, so don't worry if your plants look like this. I know it's frightening and you know, you're like, oh my gosh, what do I do? Just go to the hardware store, find yourself some BT or caterpillar killer, make sure it's organic. And uh, you know, we spray pretty much any time of day. Uh, don't do it around rain and avoid any place that might be feeding milkweed, cat uh, yeah, milkweed, no, that's not right. Um, swallowtail, that's what I meant. <laughs> 
avoid spraying around any food source for swallowtail caterpillars and monarch butterflies okay we love those we don't want to harm them we just want to get those cabbage moths and the looper caterpillars um, spray a few times you know you know spray one day wait a couple more days spray it again um, make sure you look over your leaves check the back side that's where those caterpillars are going to be hiding um, you'll find more later in the day okay not in the morning it's too hot they hide and also the definite giveaway that you have caterpillars I'll show you on this one these tiny little black spots it's caterpillar poop it's your giveaway you've got some buddies that are unwelcome in your garden so go get yourself some BT and uh, take out those caterpillars I hope that gave you a good idea on how to handle this mid-season pest. Don't forget we covered slugs and snails a couple months ago with cabbage. Next up, I'm going to guess it's going to be Japanese beetles. <laughs> if not them, then definitely squash bugs. So make sure you subscribe to the channel so you know how to handle those pests. Uh, like the video and um, hopefully I helped solve your caterpillar issue and you get to have some uh, lovely um, cauliflower and broccoli and collards once they revive and kale in your garden. Enjoy!